Welcome back to simulation and prototyping. This week, I wanted to share a project and the setup for it, um, which is based on a project that I did a few years ago, a research project where we used robots to fabric form plaster models. And part of this was, was thinking about um, using say like Gaudi's hanging chain model as a way to have certain loads on material as a way to form uh, different, different shapes. And so here's a couple of images of some of these models. And so really what I'm, what I'm gonna model today and show you how to model is the way that these plaster objects were formed on a kind of site, right? Or a topography. And what we did is we cast the part or we, we flipped our part over and then cast a fabric on top of it with plaster. And so what happened is that the, the topography was formed against the, the, the building or the form or the kind of diagram for a building. And so what we're gonna to do today is to model a part, not necessarily like these, but to develop a site condition that responds to that. And so here we can see the way that the site kind of swells around the objects. And so with that, what we're going to do is develop this project in three parts. The first will be a, a randomized version of this kind of star element on the top that'll have six sides of varying lengths and varying angles. And then what we'll do is, let's see, I've got a couple of videos here. And so what we'll see with a couple of these introductory videos is the using the seed value to produce these, using the solid body of kangaroo two to drop the object so it finds a stable position. And then we'll use kangaroo two to also inflate the ground plane around the object. And so I have a couple of these that I can share so you can get a sense for this. And so again, first part, creation of the object, second part, dropping it and finding a stable location. And then the third part is inflating the site. So I'll break the tutorial into three parts and you will need Kangaroo 2 for this tutorial. So if you wanna pause this and make sure you have that installed, make sure everything's working, that's good. Although we won't use Kangaroo 2 until we get to the second part of the tutorial. Okay, so with that here, I can kind of spin around so we can get a sense for the way that this works. And I can talk about some of the different options and variables um, and the, just the general approach on how to set up something like this. I don't imagine that you're trying to build the exact same thing, but I imagine that each of the three parts of the tutorial could be useful for other things that you're working on. So uh, you can do the whole thing or you can even skip between the different sections. So with that, I'm gonna create a new Rhino file. I'm gonna use, I think large objects inches is what I usually default to. Don't think it matters too much. I'll create a new grasshopper file. And the first thing I'll do is I'll drop in the binoculars. And the other, the other approach that I have is that I don't like to build things at the origin because as we bring in new components, they sometimes end up at the origin. So like if I were even to make an XY plane, this defaults to zero, zero, zero. So I wanna work kind of off, off of the origin just so that if I bring in an object and I can't find it, it's not buried within what I'm doing. And so let's start with the creation of a point. And this is under vectors and point and construct point. So let's construct a point and I'm just going to set the X off 200. 
And I tend to use small panels for some of these things because it's not something that I necessarily need to, to be changing. And so if we zoom out, now we see this is the origin and this is this is this place where we'll be working. So, and we'll use that um, way, we'll use that point to create a box. And so let's plug in our origin to this. And so that point, now here's our XY plane. Let's create a center box. And this is what this object is gonna be built around. I'm using a center box. It gives us six um, arms off of the star. There are some other plugins. I believe Weaverbird has some options where you can get other types of solids. If you wanna have less than six sides, more than six sides, you can play with that. And the, the approach should work the same. So let's create a center box. And this will just use our base plane and it creates a box in all directions. And so for this, I'm just gonna, again, maybe I'll even just copy my small panel from before. And I'm gonna use a relatively small value, maybe something like three. And we can plug this into all directions or all sides of our box. We, if we middle mouse click, we can zoom selected, and now we can orbit around this. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We have a box. What I, what I want to do now, the next step is to take the six sides of this box and use their different faces and use the different edges. So the first thing that we'll do is let's deconstruct the BREP. And we're actually gonna do this twice so we can copy this in a second where we need it. The first thing we want are the faces. And so from the faces, let's plug this into the next BREP. And from that, we want the edges of those faces. And the reason why, and, and we'll see if I add a quick step here, but let's create a panel. And we can see that when we get, when we take out faces, we get six faces. If I pull edges, we'll see we get 12 edges. And really what we want are each edge of each face. So this means that the difference is that when we do this twice, extracting faces first and then edges, we get this grafted into the six sides. And so hopefully you can see the difference between those. I guess I can copy this and we can look at them side by side. If we just grab the edges first, we just get 12 edges. If we grab the edges from the faces, then we get them organized four edges per face for six faces. So that's a kind of simple way that we can begin to extract these. We can hide objects as we go. And the next thing that I'd like to do is to join those edges. So we'll join curves. We can hide our edges and faces. And then what we should get out of this is one polyline per face. And these are grafted because we wanna work on these independently. And so we don't want to flatten that. We want to keep this grafted for, for a bit. And the other thing while we're here is we can find the, we'll use the area so that we can get the centroid of each face. And so now as we rotate, we can see that we have a center point on each of those individual faces. And so this will be useful for us to, to begin to construct some of the underlying structure for our star. Okay, so now that we have that, let's draw a line 
So the first one, the first line that we'll make is gonna be a line from our center. And so this will be between two endpoints. So our endpoint will be our centroid and our starting point will be the center point of our box. So as we look at this now, we can see we get a line coming out from the center to the centroid. We're gonna use this as a vector as we draw our next line. So our next line is going to be a line which will be the SDL, the start point uh, direction and the length. So our start point will be our centroid. Our direction is going to be our lines. So now we can see those new the green lines here coming off of the face and moving in the same direction in the same vector as those lines that we just created there. So the last thing is going to be the length. And here's where I wanna to start to randomize some of these things. Let's see, we'll come back. We'll use our join curves in a bit. We don't need our centroid. We don't need our internal lines. But now we have these lines. So here's where I want to begin to use some random numbers. So let's create a random. And let's talk about some of the ways that we're actually going to have three or four different random inputs. And what's nice in this case is we can use the same seed value. And so let's pick a number and that rather than having to build a domain and do other types of things, I've become a real fan of panels. And for this, we can say five to 20 as a very simple domain. And that will be our range for our random number. The number of these that we want is six. So I'm actually, rather than having to delete panel every time I can copy this. And for number, we'll set this to six because we have six sides. And for our seed value, let's create say zero is less than two, let's say 1000, point zero zero. So this gives us a pretty good range to create a seed value. If you've never used the random number before, the seed value is basically just the thing, the, the input that triggers a random number. So every time we change the seed value, in this case, we'll get six random numbers between five and 20. And so if we even, if we can add a small panel here to see what this looks like. Here, we've got six random numbers with a lot of decimal places but that doesn't matter for what we're doing. We can always lop those off, but we don't need to. Now we have six random numbers between five and 20. So that works. We'll plug these into our length. Now we can see off of our box, we have six random lengths in those six different directions. Okay, now our next step is that we're going to use that curve to, let's see, we're gonna to have to make a circle. So let's get the endpoints of that curve. And what we really want, and I like to use point containers where where the component is displaying both the start and the end. I only want the end point, or I wanna be clear about what I'm getting. And so sometimes if the direction is different, this is a nice way to choose whether we need start or end. And so in this case, I want end, and I wanna create a plane that's normal to the line at the end of each of these. And so that's gonna be a plane normal. And our origin is gonna be the point. And 
and the Z axis is going to be our lines. And so we saw the way that those just flipped around to become normal to each one of those lines. So we can leave, let's leave all of these on for now. That's looking good. So what I wanna do now, and this is just a, a, a simple way that I've devised how we can start to angle slightly the, the trajectory of these arms that are coming out of the circle. We're gonna use another random number to do this. But before we do that, what I wanna do is use this plane that's at the end of these lines to make a circle. So the circle will use center, normal, and radius. The center will be at our, um, let's see, our normal will be our plane, our center are going to be those points, and then the radius, the radius I want to vary. And so we can copy our, let's see, should we do that? So if we copy just the domain and the random number, the other two numbers will come with it because we want six sides again. And because our domain is going to be different, it will give us a different set of numbers. And this is why we can get away with just one seed value this time. In this case, let's set our radius to be, I don't know, let's say between one to 10. Let's see what this looks like as we plug it in. So the circles at the end, and we can always come back and change our, our domain. The circles at the end, what I'm gonna do next is put a point on the circle that will allow us to randomize it. So the larger the circle, the more of an angle will be introduced into our extrusion. And we'll see this in a second. So at this point, I think we can hide our points and our planes. So let's now make a, let's grab a point on the circle and we can do this with again, the endpoints. So if we plug in our circle and then I believe the start and the end are the same, but let's grab the endpoint. And with that, let's rotate our point. So what I want to do is rotate this point a random amount around the circle. And so we'll do that with a rotation or rotate. And so the geometry that we're going to rotate is our point. The angle, well, let's see, we'll plug in our plane. Our plane is our plane from before. And let's see, we've got, oh, I just plugged that into angle, sorry. Our plane is going to be our plane. And our angle will be randomized. So let's hide our first, well, let's leave those there for a second so we can see them. I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna copy our random and our domain because again, we're gonna want six, six points. In this case, our domain will be from zero 360. And because those are angles, we do need to specify um, setting our angle to be degrees, unless you're used to working in radians. Let's plug that in for angle. Now we can see that some of these are rotating more or less. If we want to see exactly what these values are, let's look at the panel. And we can see we're getting between zero and 360 with these. So that's looking good. Let's hide our first point. Let's hide our circle. We can even hide our line at this point. And so now we've got six points out in space, in some ways projected away from the face of our, of our cube. 
So that's looking good. Let's do one. The last thing I want to do is to be able to trim these along their length. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So let's make a line. So from that rotation point, let's create a line with two endpoints. Our endpoint is going to be the geometry that's coming out of our rotation. And the first point will be, let's see, we want that to be from our centroid. We want, that's what's the center point that's on our face will be our start point. So now we can see we have a line from each face going a different length, going a different direction. And if we go back to our seed value and change that, each of those things will begin to change their length, their, and their angle. So that all looks good. Let's keep going. And so now, now that we have that line, let's do two things. Let's make an, ex, let's extrude our polylines from these faces to that point. And so if we type extrusion or extrude, we can see there's extrude, which we use quite a bit, but then there's also extrude point. So let's extrude the face to the point. And so let's grab our endpoints. That'll be the point that we extrude to. And our base is going to be the second, actually what came out of our second deconstruct B rep was our edges. We join those edges together. This is what we're going to extrude those joined edges. So that looks good. We can hide our joined curves. We can even hide our endpoints now. And so the last thing that I wanna do because each of these comes to a point is that I wanna trim them along that same direction. And this will also be, this will be another random number so we can copy this and have this running parallel. It'll be a slightly different domain. We'll fix that in a second. So let's make, we're, we're going to end up trimming the object with a plane. And so what I want to do is to create a perpendicular frame. And you can see there's perpendicular frames and perpendicular frame. We only need one in this case. So we'll do that. We are going to take that curve, which we can see is this line, this last line that we created, which went from our endpoint at the rotation of the circle and from our centroid, that's gonna be the curve that we're going to add a frame to. And now let's set, so our parameter Let's see, maybe we can re-parameterize. It doesn't give us that option. I believe we should re-parameterize our curve as it comes in, but I'll, I'll confirm this in a second. What I wanna do is set the domain for our random number to be say 0.33 to 0.9. Basically one third to or 30% to 90% along that length. Let's see what that looks like in terms of our numbers. We can see a range, although many of these are at 50% or around 50%, but as soon as we change our seed value, those will all change. Let's plug that in. And now we can see we've got planes that are normal to our line and they're at different percentages along that length. So this will then, these planes will allow us to trim each of these so that they're not coming to a point.
So let's take a look at that now and let's, let's see. Let's go to intersection. What we want to do is the intersection B rep and a plane. So B rep plane intersection. And our B rep is our extrusion. Our plane is our frame. And if we hide our extrusion, now we see we have Uh, maybe we should flatten this. See, at what point? Let's see, let's flatten down our curves. might be all right something looks a little bit off for me but we'll see we'll see what's happening i'm sure we'll be able to work through this well let's see i did add and what I did before, these are looking a little wonky and I capped the holes of the extrusions. We no longer need to flatten that because we flattened the curves earlier. And if I bring this into the B-Ramp, I'm saying they look a little wonky because I thought that our planes were cutting normal through our extrusions, but I think maybe it's all right. So that capping seems to work. Now we get the point on the end. And let's create edge curves, or sorry, edge boundary boundary surfaces. And so using those curves, now we have those edges. If I hide a few more things here, now we see we have those end, the surfaces that are at the end where that's been trimmed. And let's now solid difference between first object, which is our, let's see, our capped B reps and with our boundary curves. We can hide, sorry, those boundary surfaces and let's flatten those down. And there we go. So what we have now is our object built off of our cube with six legs coming off at angles of varying, varying lengths. So now let's go back. And again, remember if, you're, if something looks a little bit off, you might wanna look at your domains, but zero to 360 should make sense. Depending on how tight you want these cropped, I believe you could go to, so the 0.9 represents going almost all the way to the end versus one third of along its length. The one to 10 is gonna be the size of the circle. And that is gonna actually produce the amount of angle 
that's coming off of that face. And here's the range of the number coming off. But let's just go through and change the seed value. And you should see your, your element begin to change in a number of different ways. And so I like to use the, the random numbers and the seed values to, to look at many different options as a kind of ideation stage and as a way just to get a sense for here's a whole range of possibilities. I can strip out that random number and put in specific values. I can put in multiple different values so that I can choose here's version one that I like, version two, version three. There's a number of things that we can do, but, but for now, we can just change our seed value and this will produce a slightly different version of that kind of similar model for us. So that gets us to this point where we've got that really nice geometry. Maybe the last thing that I wanna do, just because I want this to be a really clean, really simple closed volume is I'll do a B rep join. And so, and the reason why I'm gonna do that, let's look at a panel. If I plug in the result of these, we can see we get six closed B reps. And what we want for our next stage is just one. And so if I join our B reps and then plug this into here, oh, we're still getting six closed B reps. Let's see if we flatten it down. Nope, we're still getting six closed B reps. So I think this is all right for now. We'll see if that makes sense. But let's take a look and maybe just clarify a couple things for you as you're working on this. I'm gonna slide down the random numbers so we can group all of this together. And so that way you know where they are. Everything else that we've done now is the first part of three, which is to create the geometry. So I'll join those together. It's a good time to save your file. So let me do that. I'll save my Rhino file first. And then I'll save my Grasshopper file. So now that I have that saved, you might want to play a little bit with just changing your seed value, seeing what results. Celebrate your little, your random little object and save your files. Once you have that, what I'll do is I'll pause here and this will be at the first stage, which is the creation of the geometry. The next stage is that as we produce these, we want these, we want to drop these onto a plane and have it find its, its balance. So I'll pause here and we'll pick up after that.